there's also hurts and wounds inside of you. Things have also happened to us where we embrace ownership of things we have no business embracing the ownership of, and we have to give those to Christ. So for me, it was abandoning self and just letting my opinions wow. go through the filter mm -hmm. of my experiences, um, things that had happened to me, my choices I've made. I had to completely abandon self and my thinking and be open to receive mm -hmm. the word of God. And it took time. Hello, friends. I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad that you're with us because I want to talk to you about the power of addiction, exposing the devil's lies in those addictions, and how Jesus comes to us as the hope on our horizon. You know, I really believe, I'm a firm believer that oftentimes some of God's most beautiful creation are targeted by the enemy, and oftentimes some of the most gifted and talented people that have ever been created find themselves in the devil's crosshairs. Oftentimes those people spiral into a place of no hope. We hear story after story, even of celebrities who take their own lives because they don't understand the confusion and those attacks and assaults that come against them. Well, I have a couple of guests today that are going to blow your mind about how Jesus will come into that taboo place, the place that oftentimes we don't want to share with others, the place that we feel no hope. He will visit us there. He comes to beckon us and to say, I am the way and I am the truth, and I am the life. My guests today are beautiful people. They are good friends of mine, and I'm so honored that they are he here. It's a husband and wife duo, and it is Dr. Tracy Strawberry and Daryl Strawberry. And I should have said that the other way around, but I want to welcome you guys, <laughs> and I'm going to talk about your bio here. I thank you for being with me today. It's so Thanks great to have us. you. It's our so great to have you. Friend. Yes, well, I love I love you both. And I've had the honor of sharing time with you, Dr. Tracy. Uh, and I'm going to call you Tracy from here on out because you're my I, dear friend. I would love it. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I just, I've got to tell our audience though, a little bit about you guys. And, uh, but I wanted to invite you in on this conversation, but, uh, Daryl Strawberry is described as a baseball legend. He really is. Uh, and one of the most feared home run hitters in the game. He earned nicknames like Straw's Sweet Swing. And here's my favorite, Strawberry's Field Forever. I could sing that one for you. Uh, and the legendary Straw Man. So today, Daryl's purpose and passion is really serving the Lord Jesus Christ and speaking his message of hope to others so that their lives can be transformed as well through the power of the gospel, just as he's experienced for himself. And his quote that I wanted to read to you is, I was once very lost and tormented, but now I am found and I'm free in Christ Jesus. And I want everyone to experience that saving and transforming power of Jesus Christ. And you, my friend, have such a genuine heart for the Lord. And I'm so excited to get to have you on the program today. And your wife, Dr. Tracy Strawberry, is an international speaker, published author, and CEO. And after many years of battling addiction, alcoholism, and other controlling life issues, uh, she surrendered her life to Jesus. And she experienced a radical life transformation through the power of God and the process of that change that he brings. She openly shares her testimony with biblical solutions to real life application. Tracy's a highly sought after international speaker holding a doctorate degree in theology with a focused study in cultural restoration and leadership. And she holds her master's degree in, in business administration and management with a bachelor's in uh, ministry leadership. I think all of these things combined really make a powerhouse message. And uh, you've held four World Series titles with uh, the New York Mets and the New York Yankees, correct? Yes. Um, you, you, uh, you were in, inducted in the uh, Mets Hall of Fame. 
I mean, just to name a few things, this list is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> the, you're in the New York Times top 20 as one of the most favorite and famous celebrities out of the 100 most famous people in New York City. I mean, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that is, it's very cool. <laughs> but you're also a two-time cancer survivor. And I think that's amazing because, you know, you guys have um, really traveled the road, so to speak. You have experienced the bottom and the top of where a person could be in terms of their self-identity, what others perceive. And oftentimes people looking through those kind of glass windows of the internet or the media are thinking, oh, well, what have they got to say to me? You know, they, they've got it all. But, you know, that's just not the case. And I'm thinking about how, I know just a little bit of how you guys met, and I'd love for you to share kind of the early beginnings. And, you know, really your lives weren't looking so pretty then. But, you know, in the church, I think that we have a propensity for writing people off. When, when things look so messy, we don't see the treasure in the soil, like the parable that Jesus gave about the, finding the treasure in the dirt. We see the dirt, right? And so we don't necessarily give um, any thought to the potential or the prophetic and give honor to maybe what God is doing. So where did you see the fingerprint of God early on in your relationship, in your union? Well, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of times people don't see the treasure, just like you said, yeah. uh, in other people, you know, when they're going through things. But, uh, you know, the greatest gift that God gives to another person is when they do see the treasure inside of you. And I think that's mm -hmm. what it was for my case. Uh, Tracy saw a treasure inside of me. She saw goodness mm -hmm. inside of me. You know, of course, I was broken and lost and she was in yeah. this place of uh, coming into healing and I was still out there in the midst of my addiction. And she was, there she was around there banging on doors, pulling me out of places, trying to save me. And wow. you know, that's, that's a true gift. You know, that's a gift that comes only from God. And I thank God for it because that's why we sit here today, you know, happily married, married for 15 years and, you know, been together over 21 years, 22 years. And, and we've been tremendously blessed. You know, it was a process. It wasn't an overnight miracle, which, mm -hmm. you know, most people think is going to happen. The magic wand is just going to fall yeah. down and all of a sudden you're going to be changed. You know, it was a real process that I had to go through. Uh, she yeah. was she was already in the middle of her process and developed a relationship with Jesus. And she was studying the word and she was um, committed, I would say. And there was no commitment on my part, and I was still left out on the other side. But she was always there for me to encourage mm. me in a way. Come that, on. You can always come to this side here. <laughs> it's pretty good over yeah. there. You know, it's just yeah. a, it's your choice and your decision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I thank God for, for her. Thank God for the mm -hmm. gift that, um, that he has given me because it has blessed me today to be the man that I am today. And, you know, without mm -hmm. her, I wouldn't be sitting here. I, I'd be probably dead somewhere if it wasn't for God sending her into my life. Wow. Wow. Thank God for a praying wife, right? Praying wives, praying mamas and praying grandmamas. Yes. Amen. <laughs> They're a blessing. And, you know, I think that's really how I see the prophetic gift actually at work more than in the whole, thus saith the Lord things, you know, those moments are oftentimes great, but, you know, to see the prophetic moving through prayer and through uh, putting faith to action or, or, or you know, action, to our faith. And, you know, I, I'm so glad you said that, Daryl, because people do think they, and they want that instant recovery, that instant healing, and it is a process. And we're afraid often of facing our pain, don't you think? Right. And so we tend to kind of live more in denial and push it away and try to project something else. And that's just inauthentic. And we don't get there to, to the place of total transformation where we're actually equipped for something. So, Tracy, what did that look like for you whenever you were going and having to knock on these doors? And <laughs> I am certain that you had moments of discouragement where you were like, God, you know, come on, something's got to break here. What, what was it that kept you going? My faith, actually. And there were two components, my faith. And I could see beyond the soil. I could see mm -hmm. Daryl's greatness. The struggle for me was that I could not change him. Yeah. And I just had this perception and this, this 
thought in my mind that if I just loved him enough, I have faith for both of us. And I just would run in this faith and try to change him. So I did cross a line. There was a boundary there. And I had to learn how to love Daryl and not leave him without losing myself. Mm. And how I did that was placing my faith in God. I would pray for Daryl and I would listen ever so closely to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would tell me, go after him, leave him alone. And God was very specific at times. He is not your business. You are my Mm. business. You're to pray for him, but you're to get busy with me. If you say you trust me, that is what this looks like. Let go, let me, meaning let God and you get busy in me. So I just stayed focused on Christ. I stayed around godly women. I helped other people who were struggling and suffering. And I stayed faithful to my husband and I stayed faithful to the Lord. And in time, those, Mm -hmm. those things would come to pass, but that's where I set my heart and I set my mind. So I didn't have expectations that would set me up for failure. Mm -hmm. So essentially you were a catalyst in that situation and it began to change the atmosphere um, that, you know, I love the fact that you said you were still accepting of him. I don't, you think that in the church, we've often made the mistake of being Holy spirit junior, and we only uh, create a bigger problem. I think for people who are already dealing with shame and pain and listen, they want free, but oftentimes don't know what that process looks like. So tell us a little bit um, of even your story of coming out of addiction and how God, that had to begin with you. So you ha- you can't give away what you don't have, right? How did that That's come right. from you to be able to have that wisdom? That's right. Well, I was angry at God. So I refused the solution, which is the power of God and the love of God for so many years. My addiction and my alcoholism was so great, Brenda, that I lost custody of my three sons. And that was my bottom. That's what made me look up. And I came to God angry, bitter, broken, shaking my fist in him. God, where were you when? Right. Yeah. I was very angry at God. So I yeah. encourage somebody who's listening to this right now. God can handle your anger. Yes. If you are broken, if you are bitter and you are just shaking your fist at God, come with your fist shaking. He can take it. He can handle it. If you just keep walking in Christ, you'll come out free. Yeah. Amen. Um, you know, I think the lies and the intensity of lies right now uh, in this culture that we're experiencing are um, the magnitude is incredible. People are just breaking under the pressures and it's it's actually stirring things up and, and probably call, causing a lot of people to turn to that chemical or, or whatever that coping mechanism is, because really the, the problem is not the chemical addiction, it, the problem is the pain and the suffering that's going on in the soul. So, you know, I think um, I've had such a, an honor and privilege of actually working with some treatment centers this year. So I have such a heart for anybody that's struggling with this because uh, tell us, Daryl, how does shame uh, affect or give power to the lie that that wants to keep holding you and how do you break free from that shame shame is a real big part of you know who we are and Mm -hmm. and in the midst of our addiction is you know not what we've done and i think what we don't realize and understand more than anything is the behavior of who we are that has to change you know and then the then the other parts will come into play or stop using i think so many of us fall into that shame because our behavior hasn't changed. And I think for me, that's what it was for me. I was wondering why was I continually doing yeah. the same thing over and over again? And yeah. it, it comes down to, it boils down to my behavior hasn't changed. And then I would go into that shame mm-hmm. mode after I've done it, you know, but mm-hmm. I was still getting the same results. So, it, you know, actually a person has to get to the point of looking mm-hmm. at the behavior of who I am. And then I can clean up the same part of not being that person anymore. Because if I don't yeah. change that, I'm going to still be uh, active, you know, doing, yeah. you know, doing the, in, in the midst of my addiction, doing drugs and everything. because I really haven't changed, you know, those, those behaviors. So, you know, shame is a big part of all of us. See, the enemy wants to keep you in that place of being shameful. You know, that's his right. number one goal, you know, is to keep you stuck and, you know, don't be surprised, you know, that he, uh, he's busy 24-7. So as yeah. a, a believer, you have to be busy 24-7 to 
to be able to get yourself out of those pits and out of those different places and out of mm -hmm. a shameful place, you know, because we all fall through that in some kind of way, mm -hmm. not only in addiction, just in life in general. When we do some things, we'd be so shameful that we cannot even come back and get ourselves to the place of being well mm -hmm. because we keep having the same pattern of this behavior. So I, I learned through the fact of changing that behavior it was real important for me to get the victory over the shame that I was going through. Mm. Would you say that changing behaviors has to do with baby steps toward just turning your eyes toward the truth? Uh, because, I mean, don't you think that just knowing that Jesus didn't come to condemn us is like a beginning for us to be able to say, you know what, if he doesn't condemn me, why am I condemning myself? And uh, can you speak to that, Tracy, and, and tell us how how do we discover that if we, if we have never known Jesus or all we have seen is a bunch of religion out there that seems to be legalism and condemnation, how do we actually find the real, true, genuine Christ in his heart for us in the midst of this mess? In the midst. You know, <laughs> Brenda, guilt is a feeling of I've done something bad. Shame mm -hmm. says I am bad. So it's right. an identity issue. Right. So when you're suffering with shame, you're believing the lie that I'm bad, I'm worthless, there's no hope for me. And that's not what Christ says. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I had to surround myself with strong believing women who could pour truth into me. Mm -hmm. The word of God has to become louder than the lies that you're believing in your heart from the mm -hmm. actions that maybe um, that you've been involved with, the decisions that you've made, the losses, things of that nature. But there's also hurts and wounds inside of you. Things have also happened to us where we embrace ownership of things we have no business embracing the ownership of, and we have to give those to Christ. So for me, it was abandoning self and just letting my opinions wow. go through the filter mm -hmm. of my experiences um, things that had happened to me, my choices I've made, I had to completely abandon self and my thinking and be open to receive mm -hmm. the word of God. And it took time, but I just kept showing up, getting around the right people, allowing the word of God to come into me. Even when I was pushing it away, that spiritual battle going on, God's pulling you forward in his love. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us, to heal us, to empower yeah. us. And yeah. I had to position myself for a while to let the word soak in. And when it starts to soak in long enough, then it becomes real and it starts to push out those, those thoughts, right? Incredible. Yeah. I get excited about that subject yeah. because I just thought I was a horrible person forever. <laughs> there was no hope for me. Well, we all do. You know, we all do. We all think we're, you know, bad people and everything because of what we do. And, you know, it's all the things that, like Tracy said, that happens to a person. The person really never talk about them. And they carry that with them. And when you carry that with you, you have a tendency of being destructive. You know, I was very destructive. I, I would destroy everything around me, you know, the, yeah. the kids, the wives, you know, whatever it was, because I was selfish, self-centered, you know. And like I said, and like I was saying before, Brenda, it was that behavior of who I was. Everybody has their own different um, view about who they are when they're in the midst of addiction. But it's coming to that place where you allow Christ to become the centerpiece of your life to be able to overcome because you can't overcome it by yourself. You can fight it. You can yeah. go to every program and every treatment center you want yeah. to, and you can get a 28 day fix. I had many 28 day um, yeah. fixes in my life, you know, I'm going to different um, treatment centers. But when I come back out, who am I? If I don't come with a foundation and I don't yeah. build a strong foundation around me, I'm going to go back to the familiar. And I did that so many times. So, you know, I think when I realized wow. that I didn't want to be this person anymore, mm -hmm. I had to do something different. You got to do something different and you got to stretch yeah. yourself a little bit more. You got to allow other people to come into your life and help you and encourage you. You know, yeah. it's just a whole process thing that a person has to go through and has to realize it's not an overnight mm -hmm. miracle. You know, I think no. a lot of times people look for like this overnight miracle to happen in your life. It does not happen like that. I wish it did was overnight poof for me. You know, yeah. I would have saved myself <laughs> a lot of headaches and a lot of craziness. Right. <laughs> but I'm grateful for the would. craziness and the headaches too because it brought me to a, a better yeah. understanding that I won't ever have to be in that type of behavior in my life anymore once I, you know, meet Jesus. Now I can start moving forward and now the transformation could take place in your life and you could change forever. Amen. Amen. And I just think 
uh, often that, you know, it's those who have lived the hardest lives and have come through such tremendous transformation like you guys have that are going to be those that God says when, that Jesus will look at when you cross those gates and say, he will say, well done, my good and my faithful servant, because you know what? It's about micro decisions. And that's where we've got to bring this home and understand that there is no shame in the process. And whoever's told you that there is, is full of baloney. They don't know what they're talking about because you know what? Jesus loves his sheep and sheep are messy and uh, life is messy. Life is painful. And what, as you were talking, you guys, I was seeing almost like it's a rebirthing, you know, uh, starting over, going back to almost a childlike faith. And, and that's a choice to where you, you both mentioned self kind of abandoning that self-centered mode, that self-protective mode where I'm going to be my own God and I'm going to fix this. But then we realize it's, I think it's in the place of desperation, don't you, that we actually meet the real Jesus? When we realize I can't do this. <laughs> I know no 28-day program is going to really get me there. I've got to bring the person of Jesus to the forefront of this and to the center of my pain. You know, I held someone in my arms who was, uh, it was a young man who was just struggling. I had spoken at a thing at a treatment center uh, recently and he came to me, he was not a believer. He, he just started weeping and I could see the struggles, you know, on him. And uh, he talked about how that he was violated as a young man and what this had done to him. And I thought, you know, how are we forgetting these people? How are we not seeing that our job as the body of Christ, I'm so sorry, I'm emotional right now, okay. but bind up the broken mm-hmm. and to help the oppressed. And listen, there are so many different forms of oppression. And so I want you guys, I, you know, I feel like I took half the program just to talk about your bios. <laughs> so I mean, if we can have you on again, we've got to do this to give you more time, but I would like for you to take just the next say two minutes and, Minister to whoever's watching right now that is absolutely desperate. They've given up on religion. They've given up on treatment programs. They've given up on, uh, you know, themselves. Give them some hope for right now. Go ahead. Well, I would say you're worth it. I would say that I was a woman who just slept around and I had a lot of men under my belt and I had a lot of broken relationships under my belt and so many bad choices, deep, dark places I lost. I was a woman who lost custody of my children. It doesn't define you. The power of God and the process of change. A treatment center can give you practical application of practical things that you can do every day, but it is the power of God, friend. It is the power of the Holy Spirit who can only heal those deep, dark wounds that only you and Jesus know those things you've been through, those violations and those hard things. And I promise you, but you have to stay and stay. Just run to Jesus and not away from him. And there's practical steps that you have to take as well. So if you just keep running to people that will help you, Jesus will make you whole. You will not feel like this forever. That shame will fall off of you because you're a son or daughter of the king. Jesus is waiting to heal you and make you whole. Not only that, but put you into purpose. We're in purpose today. He doesn't just clean you up and leave you in your mess. He pulls you out of everything and it's hard and it's a struggle, but he'll equip you to do it. Well, come on, hmm. somebody. That's real. Ooh, yeah. Excited about Amen. That. That's Woo. right. You encourage somebody. Come on. I love that. Mouth, honey. I love that idea, buddy. I think <laughs> the most important thing for us to understand in this life, it comes down to your faith. You know, faith is the most important thing. And a lot of times we lose faith and we lose hope. If you lose your faith and hope, you lose everything. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I think about Mark 5, the woman with the blood issue. She had an issue for 12 years, but it was her faith that got her to God, uh, to Jesus, to be able to touch the hem of his Mm -hmm. garment that made her well. And that's the same thing with us. It's our faith. My faith kept me pulling me forward no matter what I felt like and what I was going through. 
when mm -hmm. I understand that faith is the fruit of who I am, then it becomes my destiny where I'm going. And you're going, God's going to take you to a greater place when you can understand you're operating faith, not your feelings, because we have a lot of feelings when we're going through addictions and, and dealing with things and fighting against things. And we, we fight against those feelings and we can never get the victory because we always in our feelings. So I'm encouraging you today operating your faith. Don't turn your back on your faith. I don't care what it looks like. You keep pushing forward because if you keep pushing forward, eventually you'll be like that woman that had her faith mm. to go through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment. And it wow. made her well immediately because of her faith. And what did he say to her? He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. So I'm encouraging yes. you on your faith today. Stay in that place because that's the purpose of who we are. And that's what God created mm. us to have is our faith. Mm, that's so powerful. And, you know, it, it, as you said, he, he is, her faith made her whole. And you guys have experienced God bringing back the things that were lost. I mean, you've got relationships with your children now. Things have been restored. Look at your lives and look how powerful uh, the your force is against the kingdom of darkness to be able to speak the truth against it and reveal and expose the way that he comes against people. You're saving lives with what you're doing. And I just want to thank you for what you're doing and commend you because our focus really should be there. I think about Harriet Tubman and how she said, you know what, what is freedom to me? If I can't go back and help those yes. who are still enslaved and still yes. there in that bondage, how can I come here and enjoy the, all the, the, the privies of life and knowing that? And so to us as believers, my challenge is how can we sit on our in our pretty little homes and our, our perfect little worlds and go to our pretty little church and not care about those that Jesus loves? And how can we not go and feed his sheep? Those are the ones who really, truly need to hear the message of Jesus. They've got a target on their back and there is an enemy of all of our souls. And I think that, you know, part of how he keeps the church dead and and uh, not able to help anyone is uh, through through those kind of lies where we're we're self-absorbed and we're only thinking about our blessings. So, you know, we're here to bless others. We're here to set them free. And we are the extension of Jesus. We are his body. Um, I really feel that there's, gosh, I've, do you guys have anything on your heart that you feel there, there's someone specific? I feel like there's someone specific that's watching today that needs to know that what they have experienced even in the church or in their Christian family is really not a representation of Jesus' love. There is no sin so great. There is no pit so deep that he cannot reach. Um, do one of you feel anything that you, you would want to say to that person right now? Well, the church is a family. And church hurt will happen to everyone. It's the yeah. one of the greatest weapons of the enemy. Just like there's dysfunction in our mm -hmm. families who don't know Christ, there's also dysfunction in the church because we are all in different places in our walks with God. We are all imperfect people that serve a perfect God. Please do not let the enemy keep you away because of church mm -hmm. hurt. It's not the first time you're going to experience it. It's not the first time you're going to run into somebody who judges or points the finger at you. You mm -hmm. lift yourself up high and know that Jesus has a plan for you. And you be mm -hmm. determined that there's no person, no experience, no devil in hell that's going to keep you out of the arms of Jesus under the teaching of the word of God right. and in the corporate presence of the church, because the church is still the greatest family and community that Amen. can ever be and will ever be. Yeah. And just remember one thing that the church is like the hospital. Yes. Yeah. The hospital has a bed for you. <laughs> the church has a bed for you. It has a seat oh. for you too. So it's just like the hospital is for everybody there to come there and get well. And, 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 and like I said before, it doesn't happen overnight. It's going to be yeah. through your obedience and sitting there and learning who you are in Christ mm -hmm. to be able to get well. I love it. I love it. So, okay, let's talk about your ministry for a minute. How do you, uh, what are you doing? Are you, you're both speaking, aren't you? To different groups. Tell us how people can get a hold of you and some of the things you're focused on right now. 
Well, finding findingyourway.com is our ministry. I'm a traveling evangelist. I'm always speaking at a lot of places uh, across the country, and I do a lot of men's ministry, and I do a lot of yeah. speaking for you know FCA Fellowship for Christian Athletes, and try to empower kids, you know, that Christ is the way, the wow. other way, and try to give them the understand, get them to understand that the mm -hmm. symbol of the cross is going to be your home, it's going to be your safety net for everything because you're going to need it one day, and you're going to have to have to fall back on something because I always tell the younger people that the trials and tribulations are going to come. It doesn't matter who you are, rich, famous, black, white, pink, whatever it may be. Right. But they, they're, they're coming. And if you don't have that foundation of the cross, you won't be strong enough to stand on your own two feet. The enemy will come in and he'll just swoop you right out and take you. So mm -hmm. that, that's my message. I travel this country to try to encourage people that God is still God. He's still sitting yeah. on the throne no matter what pandemic, no matter what kind of crisis yeah. you got, races is, issues. And God is still mm -hmm. God. He's sitting on the yeah. throne. All you got to do is look to the the symbol of the cross and bring yourself to the cross <laughs> and let God keep you free from all these outside things that try to interfere mm -hmm. with your life. Amen. 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 Tracy, any last words? Sure. I mean, go to our <laughs> website and sign up because God's pulling me off the road because the demand is so great. I mean, wow. thousands have asked us, how do I get well? How do I get well? So mm. I'm a writer. I have a new book coming out this, this year, 2022, another book. I write curriculum. So God has called me and also Daryl when he's off the road to re to be able to reach the multitudes with resources where I can get online and I can start to help walk people through some of these things through curriculum, through hope and not just pop in and pop out. You need those people, but God's calling me off. So go to findingyourway.com, sign up for the release of these things and let's get some resources into your hand and some spiritual mentorship to help you get to the other side. Oh, I love it. Listen, I love you guys. And I really appreciate you. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, we got to do it again. Can we do it again? Oh, well, you. you and Paul. Yes. Your amazing husband. We love you too. And uh, next time we're in town together, we got to get together. So listen, yeah. And listen, friends, I am so appreciative to you too for taking time out of your day to be with us. I pray that you have gleaned some truth and some hope from this conversation and that the things that were said today from a very real and genuine place will give you the inspiration to want to fight for your life, to say, I know God has something better for me. And this is not the end of it all. So thank you for joining with me. Come and be with us again. And I'm going to have these guys. I promise I'll have them again. So uh, you have a blessed day. I'm Brenda Crouch, and I'm going to sign off. Mm -hmm.